was only one boy born in that month ten years ago, Mr. Monks, birthed in this very place to an Agnes Leaford, Oliver Twist. I named the boy myself. It is considered I have a great gift with names. The young girl died of the childbirth fever. One of our trustees was midwife. I'll fetch her for you. Well? I don't remember nothing, Mrs. Corney. Nothing at all? <coughs> Did Will's mother say anything to you? <coughs> oh, you're about as much use as a sick head, ain't you? I'll cock and almost get out. The boy's gone from here now, ran away. We know she'd have a viper in her bosom and Oliver Twist, sir. Caused the riot, sir. Locally. Very violent. Destroyed several coffins and a splendid hat. I myself sustained serious injury to my buttock. Sitting without several cushions causes the most terrible anguish. No, sir. Not the ledger, sir. Parish property, sir. More than my job's worth to let you take it. Uh, the boy could be anywhere, but his sort always winds up back in trouble. Mr. Bumble and I might hear some news. Perhaps sir might like to leave an address. Speak up for the love of God. What? He said Oliver Twist, sir. Pickpocket. Blight upon our city. A plague visited on our citizens, worse than sewer rats. It wasn't me. Oh, who was it then? Huh? <laughs> then you acted alone. From base and venal instincts, all that's left for me to do is to pass sentence. Prison or the colonies? Or how many have I sent to the gallows this week? 22, but it's only Tuesday. <laughs> Simple. Hanging it is. Oliver! Good morning! Good morning, Mr. Monks. I thought we could sneak more freely here. I hope you don't find it too squalid. Squalid? No, I rather like it. Might I inquire why you wish the boy to be disposed of? Is this some new sport that gentlemen are pursuing these days, sir? Oh, Mr. Fagin, let's not muddy the waters with reasons and motives. Very good, sir. The issue is clear. He must hang. It's easy enough to get a pauper child hung. Arrange it so that the boy is caught in a crime which guarantees the news. Mm, it may take time. The right situation, the right circumstances. I leave the intricacies to you. And of course, uh, the personal risk to myself is... Uh, I understand, Mr. Fagan. Life such as yours is not one of leisure and ease. A man such as yourself, harried from place to place, jeered at, treated with suspicion and contempt. You could do with a friend. I could be that friend. And when the boy is cold in a convict's grave, there will be more of these. More than you can count. Do we have a deal? We do, sir. Good day, Mr. Fagan. Good day to you, Mr. Monks. And it is an honor and a pleasure to associate with such a gentleman, sir. I was sorry to leave you so suddenly when you sent me to the court to plead the pickpocket's case. I must have gone to the wrong sessions. And then I received word that may have helped our search and I had to pursue it. I'm only sorry I 
do not have happier news to return with. Grandfather, this search has gone on for such a time. I am concerned about your health. I won't give up. So long as you are happy to act on my behalf. Of course, you shouldn't even need to ask. Your compassion is a standard to which I constantly aspire. Would that I'd been more compassionate ten years ago. We will find Agnes and her child. I'm very proud of you. Your father would have been very proud of you. Fine son for a man to have. Miss Rose. Sir. My apologies. I did not mean to make you jump. I wasn't expecting to see you. What a pleasant surprise. Yep. The pleasure is all mine. A walk in the park. Mud. Ah, the delights of nature. Yes, sir. Excuse me, I must get changed. Miss Rose. Sir? You do not ask if my trip was profitable, if I have any news of your sister and her child. Oh, did you? Sadly, no. But we live in hope. Yes, sir.